Hello everyone. Um, look, in this presentation I would just like to look at a couple of things. In particular, I want to look at uh, the parameters uh, that some of you seem to be struggling a little bit with and some of you just want clarification. And the other uh, thing that I wanted to look at is the research questions. And uh, I'd like to begin this by just quoting uh, to you from Roland. She says that the the research problem is at the centre of your entire inquiry project and directly related to your goal or goals and the associated research questions. In order for the research to be at all meaningful, there has to be an identifiable connection between the answers to the research questions and the research problem inspiring your inquiry. And she got that from uh, Kerlinger and Lee of 2000. Anyway, look, let's unpack this a little bit. The research problem. Well, you remember that you had to um, give us a statement or problem statement? Well, that's the research problem. You chose a topic. In your case, it was a topic related to environmental sustainability. And so you chose a topic within the context of environmental uh, sustainability. And you determine why you are going to do this. In other words, you're, you set yourself some goals, either explicitly or in, uh, uh, not, not so directly or subconsciously. And you are trying to conduct your inquiry using research questions related to the research problem. Now, so that what you do has some meaning, you're going to have to, and focus, you're going to have to identify a connection between the answers to the research questions and the research inquiry problem that you've set for yourself. Okay? So, I think the best thing to do in this case is just to show you by way of example what it is that we mean by parameters, what it is that we mean by research questions, and the way the two are interrelated and how they affect the rest of the assessment or the project. So let's just scroll down to an example. Okay, now before I do this, I want you to realize that it's just for the sake of convenience that I've divided this up into various headings, such as the topic, the research problem, background and justification, deficiencies in the evidence, and so on and so forth. Okay, audience and all that. For us, Apart from the rationale, which is a separate section, the rest really belongs in the introduction. Okay, so now, of course, I can't give you an example using um, environmental sustainability as much as we'd all like that. But I've chosen to look into distance education via online platforms. My broader topic, if you like, is online teaching and learning or teaching and learning, online teaching and learning. I can go back even further. We could look at education. And within education, I narrow it down to teaching and learning. And within teaching and learning, I'm going to further narrow it down to online teaching and learning, uh, or distance education via online platforms. All right, and so I give an indication of what my topic is, as you can see. And it's only taking, what, one? Let's see. One sentence, one sentence, two sentences, okay, three sentences to explain to my audience what my topic is. So that comes at the beginning, the lead in, if you like, to the introduction. Then I move further down. Now, as I say, I have done this as a separate section just for convenience, but for you, it's going to be one um introduction without the headings or the subheadings. All right, now what, what is happening is I'm going for the, from this rather broad statement and I'm gradually narrowing it down, okay? Um, live online sessions may be delivered in virtual classrooms from Adobe Connect, Blackboard Collaborate or BB Collaborate or other software programs. See, I'm gradually narrowing it down. Regardless of the software used, Student attendance 
at live online sessions, see I'm narrowing it down to attendance now, is unpredictable. Okay, um, it's a common complaint among the online faculty at university that many, oftentimes most of their students, do not attend the live online sessions. So I narrow it down and finally I come to this statement in green, which is the end focus, if you like, of my narrowing, rings down, where I say, this inquiry will address the problem of low student attendance at non-mandatory virtual classroom meetings in online university courses, college courses, if you like, by investigating the reasons students do and do not attend non-mandatory synchronous sessions in BB Collaborate, as well as the role of instructors, <coughs> that the role the instructors can play to increase participation at these sessions. Okay, there I've made it very clear that although we have a very broad topic of education and I've chosen something within that to investigate, I am going to limit it to these three things. These three limitations are known as the parameters. Parameters are what you use and what you must identify to your reader as the limitations or the framework around which you are going to build your research project. Now let's move on further down to background and justification. Well, I've put rationale here because some of this is the reasons why you've chosen your topic and other parts of it really belong in the introduction. But what I'd like you to notice here is that in order to have my work taken more seriously, I've been using in-text referencing on which to base what I have, what it is that I have to say. Okay, so let's move further down. So there we've seen that I've done, uh, I've indicated the parameters. I've even numbered them just for our sake. I don't want you to do this in the assessment. And let's move on further down to where it comes to audience. Again, this is something that belongs either in the introduction or the rationale. You have to decide and I have to evaluate. But um, it's here for your benefit. Purpose of inquiry, same thing again, you know. Why am I doing this? You know, who cares? Why is it important and so on? All right, again, I would say that this is probably partially rationale, partially introduction as well. Right down to the research questions, which is the second main reason that I'm doing this, um, uh, this video. So we can see that the research questions are based around the central question. And my central question is, what are student attitudes regarding non-mandatory synchronous sessions in Blackboard in the School of Education at Curtin University? So from the very, very broad topic of education, narrowing right down to teaching and learning, teaching and learning online, I have now decided that my focus is going to be Blackboard sessions. Well, no, let's start with a broader focus. Uh, what the situation is at Curtin University, not just Curtin University, but within Curtin University, the School of Education, and within the School of Education, sessions on Blackboard. There you go. So that's very narrow and doable. And based on all that and all the foregoing, I've developed these research questions, and I'm going to hope that when we look at these research questions, we can directly link them back um, to the parameters that we've identified. So let's see, what are students' reasons for, for attending? So reasons for attending. Let's see. Number one up here is reasons students attend. Good, okay. Right, hopefully the next one is going to be about reasons why students don't attend. Let's scroll down and have a look. What, what are students' reasons for not attending? Good, okay, okay. And now we're hoping that the third parameter is going to be reflected in this third question and the university or instructors and their role. Let's take a look. Uh, the role of instructors or the university, great. 
All right, so we can see a clear connection between the parameters and the research questions, um, even down to some of the words that are being used. I don't think it's a good idea to use exactly the same words um, uh, completely, and I don't think it's a good idea to use none of the words either. Um, I think a judicious use of both will make it clear to the reader or your audience how um, these research questions are connected to the parameters. Okay, look, I think that's probably about it, really. Um, that's what I wanted to say. Um, look, I will leave it there. If I think anything else, I'll let you know. Um, otherwise, I hope this has been a benefit and the best of luck to all of you in your second and your third assessment. Thanks, everyone. Oh, look, by the way, what I wanted to say is something did occur to me. You see these three research questions. Now, each one of them is going to be answered in your assessment three discussion and findings section as a paragraph. So there'll be a paragraph about this, then there'll be a paragraph about this, and so on. All right, that means that in your discussion and findings, oh no, if I were to do this, in my discussion and findings, there would have been three paragraphs, maybe more, but not too many more, because I do have to respect the word limit of the section. Um, where in one of your answers to the research questions, there is enough information to make two paragraphs out of it. Okay, but please bear in mind that paragraphs are generally two to 250 words, um, not less and not more than that, as the, is usually the case. But more about that later if needs be. All right, I'll leave it there. Uh, see you again next time. Thanks, everyone.